back to Wi-Fi money. Um, the idea of the show is basically what it sounds like. It's, you know, we just want to talk about how to make money online. Obviously, Nagato and I have um, some insights into the crypto market, which we definitely want to talk about. Probably the majority of the show, I would say. Um, but in general, we also want to touch on things like building your brand online and uh, how to navigate the world as a digital nomad and uh, creating all those types of freedom, you know, that come from making money on the internet. Nagata's been doing this for a long time. Uh, I have been more so the last year or so, I'd say. I've really kind of clicked into place. Um, but yeah, man, how are you feeling about the markets right now? We've, we're obviously experiencing our first like little dip here even though it's not too aggressive at all for anyone that's been around you know we can expect like at some point we're gonna get like a 20 30 percent dip right now we're probably less than 10 over the last few days but uh, where's your head out bro bro i was talking about this yesterday like bdc went up in the past like let me pull up the chart a bit like five weeks went up like 60 percent 70 percent something like that and then like yesterday that like a five percent correction and now everybody's like oh my god is we're going down like it's already over the top is in we already were like some people say like we already uh we were already at euphoria and to me that it's fucking crazy like this is just like a big like a small dip after a fucking like crazy run up so everybody like yesterday was freaking out but like most of altcoins they like really well and i think that the best scenario right now will be like btc ranging a bit uh between let's say like 63 and 70k something like that and that will like uh give some time to the alts to catch up and yeah nothing to worry about like dips are normal in the grand scheme of things even like during like parabolic uptrends and they have they have to like you have to welcome them they are a blessing because you can like lower your entry prices and everything you don't have to scare them but you know like most people they do the opposite they buy when they are green can when there are like a lot of green candles and then freak out during like red candles but just fucking do the opposite and bless like buy during the dips at old and chill like I said it many times to me right now it's just old and chill season this market is going much higher whether you like it or not 2024 will be a fucking crazy year for crypto and you just have to wait like if you did like your uh work in, during the bear market now it's like waiting season and you will reap uh, all the fucking rewards you deserve what do you think gregory i i agree with that bro because a lot of people, they get really anxious once the moves start to come. So even if, you know, I know people that have been stacking during the bear market, which is great. Like you've been consistent, you've added to your positions, you've kind of set yourself up for the run. And then maybe you have some tokens that, you know, aren't keeping up with whatever the top of the chart, you know, fastest movers are. And you have this plan that you set out and you've been executing and then the fucking time comes to just wait another month or two for your shit to start going and you start to get anxious and you switch up on your own plan at the last second and that's how you fuck yourself when you start chasing and i'm not saying by the way and we're going to get into meme coins and all that stuff i'm not saying don't do that i think everyone's in their own scenario i think the amount of risk you want to take the amount of free capital you have the amount of fun you want to have like like all that stuff there's room for taking risk and for going outside the box and, you know, adding a little more, uh, going a little further out on the risk curve, let's say. At the same time, don't compromise the plan that you set in place unless there's been something fundamental that's changed in your investment or in your investment thesis. So, yeah, you know, Nagata, as Nagata pointed out, we're up. Uh, so over the last 21 weeks, we're up in Bitcoin 171%. Um, so we're, we're clearly back in the bull. We've, we've made an all time high there. And then in the last five weeks, we went up, uh, 74%. And so now we've pulled back just about from 70, what was it? 73 to 66. We pulled back. So we'll call that 10%. And now we're already back up to 68. So we're kind of ranging it. It's like, it. it's like yeah. see, right now, like from the top, it's like, 
let me let me see it's like seven percent so not even like yeah not currently even about seven percent off yeah um and this is so we've had this would be the third red day in a row uh we did have one other three red days in a row recently um which was on february 21st second and third and immediately after that, we pumped from the next five days, we pumped from 50K to 64K. So I'm not saying that's going to happen again, but there's nothing wrong with a correction. Um, I wouldn't expect, personally, I wouldn't expect it to happen today or tomorrow just because we don't have the ETFs really, you know, stomping during the weekend. And that's where we're getting most of our inflow from. But BTC looks amazing. Um, we are, we're obviously going to range around all time highs. You know what I mean? Uh, I probably sh we should go back and maybe and look at last cycle what happened when we crossed the all time high. Um, let's see. So in November 2020, we crossed. Yeah. So we crossed on November 30th, 2020. We went or November 20 December 1st. We hit 19.9. I guess once we crossed, we never really came back. Tech. No, that was like, like three week of side sideways movements. Yeah, like right, like bouncing up against. Like, it was like hitting yeah. up against twenty, and then once it broke yeah. through, we kind of yeah. went. Yeah. But it's all kind of different though, because this is po This is still pre having, bro. That's like the crazy part. Yeah. I was looking at the BTC dominance right now. Yeah, we are at resistance, but I don't know. It seems like it wants. To go higher, so maybe we'll see like BTC outperforming alts for a, for a li for a little bit longer. It's hard to say, mm. you know. But the the point is that you you should have had a plan coming in, um, yeah. and we can speak to people as well that maybe they're just on the brink and they, they haven't entered the market yet, and they're wondering if now's a good time or when's a good time. We can talk to those people. But for the people yeah. that have been in the market. You know, maybe this is your second cycle. Maybe you were buying during the bear market. It's like, this is what you were waiting for. Like, Nagato said it best. This is hold and chill season. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't need to overplay your hand. You're If you're positioned, just fucking enjoy the ride, dude. Like, this is what it's all about. People get scared. They want fucking 500% gains, 1,000% gains, and they can't handle, like, a 10 or 20% drop without shitting themselves. Or they can't handle, like a meme coin going crazy and then they wanted to sell their position because, oh, dude, you waited a year or like a year and a half or two years for this to come back and now you're going to sell because it's not, you can't wait another three weeks or whatever. You know what I mean? Can, can I say something here, bro? No, I don't think like, so. Oh, okay. Bye-bye. So we're no, going to say that. The, we're going to shut the room down. A, a, ton of, a ton of people like are asking me like, bro, are you taking profits right now? Like, uh, how much of your portfolio are you selling? I'm not fucking taking any profits at the moment. Like for me, it's fucking stupid. Why the, f like, as you know, I'm mostly like in alts. I can say like I'm hundred percent in alts. Why the fuck should I take profit right now? We're just like, basically just BTC went up. Yeah. Okay. Like some alts went parabolic. I also sold some of them and everything. But for me, like, it's really stupid. Like, uh, I feel like most people, they have to like change their mindset because they still have like bear market PTSD and they are still acting like we are still in a bear market. So, okay, you are holding some coins in a bear market. They go up like 2x, 3x. Okay, aggressively sell all the position. It's fine. But right now, yeah, if you want to like take your initial out, take some profits, it's always like a good idea, but don't take aggressive profits at the moment. Like the market is going much higher. Like, I don't know if you guys were here in 2021, but like if we are going to experience a similar level of, of euphoria in this run, most tokens you're, you see right now, at least they will like 5, 10 X easy. So in my opinion, just as I said before, this is like all the chill season, forget about your uh, bear market PTSD and just chill a bit. Like you waited for like two years of bear market. Most of you may be more. Don't just like, focus like too much on taking profits right now wait a bit more because like in my opinion it's impossible that btc keeps like going up and the alts like keep lagging like oh, all the time so 
that's my idea. So, dude, if you're looking at the Wall Street cheat sheet, you know, um, I'm going to try and find a picture of it so those that don't know it, I can pin it up in the top. But for those that do... Uh, I, I have it, I have it, I have Okay, it. yeah. Uh, did you put it in a tweet recently? I feel like you did. Yeah. And you had the arrow yeah. to where you think we are. Let's talk a little bit about that. No, uh, no, uh, I don't have the arrow. I, I can post it right where now. Where was that from? I saw, uh, was that in your I email? Made, wait, it might have been in your email I made it, Wait, 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 wait. I have it. Okay. I will post it right now under the tweet. Okay. And the I, guy, posted, I posted yesterday in my, in my email newsletter. That's where I, I saw it. Right right that's now. where I saw it. If you guys aren't signed up for Nagato's newsletter, you need to jump on that. Yeah. It's free yeah, sure. and he's giving you insights into the market. The great thing about Nagato is not only is he kind of, uh, he doesn't just share where, we, where he thinks we are and provide evidence to back it up, but he's much more focused on the general mindset than I think 99% of crypto influencers are. And that's really like, such a massive part of the game this is my third cycle now and the one thing that is clear to me is that emotional regulation is the biggest thing that you could possibly have on top of you know being able to add when when the bear market is there and kind of uh you know trust your fundamental analysis of this asset class but outside of like positioning yourself as step one being able to regulate your emotions and kind of understand where we are is uh, the biggest thing that we can do. So let me know when you put that in there, Nagato. I'm gonna. Okay. I I posted. I posted. Um, where did you put it underneath the? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't know. Uh, oh, I see. I'm okay, like... I'm gonna pin it to the top here. So this should show up at the top of your room between now and the next ten seconds. Um, if you guys go into that, this is the Wall Street cheat sheet. Right? A lot of you are familiar with this, and it uh, essentially takes a look at the emotions that in the market as a whole, like the hive mind, will go through as we navigate a, an entire cycle. And this is from Wall Street, which normally would take maybe 15 or 20 years to play out in the past, but in yeah. crypto, these take you know between three and four years usually. And why don't you just talk us through like kind of how we got to where we are and where you think we are, bro? Okay, like so. Um, I also share like this picture uh, without my um, analysis behind it. Uh, probably like around a week ago on my X, and most people they were like on the same uh, wavelength as me, so they were thinking like we are around opt optimism, uh, maybe a bit like past optimism towards belief, which is the reason I think we are. But I also saw many people that are, were already saying that we are in thrill phase or euphoria. And for me, that was fucking madness because maybe uh, they are a little bit too focused on the crypto market. But if you zoom out, like uh, pretty much like nobody right now is talking about crypto as much as they were talking about it in 2021. Like, yeah, okay, the, the BTC ETF and the BTC run uh, made some people like interested again in the crypto market. Uh, we saw like some... Um, mainstream uh, news outlets started talking about uh, crypto and everything, but like, I don't see the same vibes um, as in 2021. I don't know if you can agree with me on this. I definitely agree with you. I think we're starting to get a little bit of movement. Like I have a, for instance, I have a crypto group that I started. It's not very large, but it's a bunch of close friends. There's maybe like 20 of us in there on signal. And they're mostly other than like me and my brother and maybe one other person. It's mostly people that they just completely log off during the bear. Right. And then, yeah. and then they come online uh, just like the rest of retail when things start to move again. And there's been a couple of messages that have come on like, Hey, how are you guys feeling? Like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, they're more and then I think that's like a representation of the larger retail market. So Guys, we talk about retail. That's basically like me and you, right? It's just like random people that are trying to invest. And then you have like the institutional money, which is what's actually driving the market this time. And it just makes me feel a lot more confident about where we are too, because in the past bull markets, we're like, oh, institutional money's coming. Like it was like this dream that we were all like, wait, didn't a guy heard from a guy heard from a guy that like this one hedge fund may want to, and it's like, this is different, Bo, because the ETF is live. We're seeing the inflows. We're seeing BlackRock put in, you know, billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars every day. Um, people are, are selling their gold for Bitcoin. People are selling GBTC for like the ETF Bitcoin. Like things are happening. Um, and 
people are talking, but for real, like they're like, we're going to like, and you listen to the Gary Cardones and these type of guys that are doing spaces. And this is why spaces are so lit. Cause you just really get like a bunch of good alpha and you just hear how, you know, these people are like literally knocking on the door and they have zero percent allocation right now. And if the world goes to like one or two or 3% allocation, this market is 10, 15, 20 X where we are right now. So to just be at all time highs and be ranging in this area and the having hasn't even happened yet for you to think that we're anywhere past like optimism or maybe entering belief uh, on this chart above, I think is kind of ludicrous. Um, yeah. You know, the meme coin stuff is like, okay, people are getting excited. Like some of the veterans are getting excited. The people who have been around, I'd like to hear what you think about this man. Cause, cause my, 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 what it looks like to me, um, is in the past you've seen like meme coins kind of signal maybe the end of a cycle where you get like a bunch yeah, of people pushing the yeah, Bitcoin but- and then that money flows into the mid caps and the alts and then you get this like create like last cycle we had all the Binance coins and everything going absolutely ape shit and then it ends right yeah. and this time you're kind of seeing Bitcoin go and you're while that's happening you're seeing all these meme coins start to pop off too because you've got like Solana which we didn't really have in the you know yeah. the psyche last time which has like no trading fees basically super fast transactions and allows people to like move in and out create coins in like just a second or two and it's just going a little banana so what, what i think we're seeing is the institutional money flow into bitcoin and start to pump everybody's bags that have been around and all those same people that have been around are like let's have some fun and just dick around like yeah maybe we have some money in Quan or H bar or like whatever these like mid caps are, but that we're just holding those bags. Like we're not really kind of like adding there or selling there. We're just waiting. We're kind of watching our Bitcoin go up watching like maybe, you know, I know you've had some success in like render and some of these other ones, maybe you have some AI coins. So whatever, we have some positions that are going up and then the meme coin is not signaling this end or this euphoria this time. It's signaling just kind of like a lot of, veterans that are just having some fun while we wait for retail to come in and i think the altcoins like ethereum and like all of the all this stuff and all these kind of like ones in the teens and the 20s on coin market cap once those start to really run i think that's a better signal that we're starting to enter into um, not euphoria necessarily but more of a parabolic overall rise absolutely like I saw some people tweeting about the fact that, yeah, memes were going crazy. Uh, Last time it happened, like the run was over and everything like that. But yeah, last time um, you you saw some meme coins going to like 25 billion plus of market cap. Right now it's still like nothing yet. Some of them, they are popping out and everything, but it's still like so, so, so much uh, smaller than last time. And it's just... I agree with you. Are just like some uh, OGs like playing around, some newbies playing around, and it's basically just that, in my opinion. It's nothing to worry about. Uh, yeah, uh, I believe. Yeah, as you as you said that we are like a bit past optimism, entering belief right now. I can see it also from uh, the insights of my uh, brand's account, especially on Instagram. Uh, I've been posting a lot of memes and shit like that recently and they are fucking going uh, ballistic and when it happens usually it's because um, the algo is boosting crypto content which means that people are enjoying crypto content which in the end means that people are getting back into crypto and getting interested in crypto again so this is another sign that the earth is coming but yeah, we are still far from thrill, euphoria, and everything. But don't, um, how can I say, it? like, be prepared because, like, the switch can happen really fast. Like, it doesn't have to, like, we don't have to wait, like, for months for it to happen. Like, it can be, like, really fucking quick. And regarding this, like, I see many, uh, many, many people, they are trying to predict uh, a possible top. They say, yeah. Top in two months, three months, four months, uh, after elections, uh, January 2025, like, I think it's a bit stupid, uh, because like all those price predictions or timeline predictions are 
still guesswork. They're just like speculation. So in my opinion, yeah, you should like pay attention to those predictions. You should have, you have your own idea, your own plan. But in my opinion, it's just like, you should just like wait and simply react to what the market presents to you. Uh, and when you smell euphoria, when you see all the people coming back into crypto and everything, you start selling slowly and you are done. Like, it's really not that complicated. Like, you can make it as complicated as you want, but you can also make it, like, as simple as you want. Zero! Hey! Hey! <laughs> hello, hello. Hello to everyone. Oh, my God. What's up, Ken? I'm surprised. The fat fuck is here. Yeah, bro. What's up? What's up? I, uh, I, I thought we were just going to, me and Regatta were, Regatta were going to riff for a bit, but I saw you jump in here, bro. So I had to get you up. Yeah, I, I, I'm just here for a quick, uh, for a quick, uh, hello. Quick, and a quickie. Just, yeah. He just wants to support us. Yeah, man. Zero's been killing it. Check his timeline out. Um, his analysis is some of the sharpest that you're going to get, especially with regards to technical analysis. Um, but for everyone that's just joining us, welcome to Wi-Fi Money. This is a, we're going to start off with a weekly space. We did this space last year. Um, people fucking loved it. Uh, so we're bringing it back now for the bull and be basically me and Nagato. We're going to go, you know, we're going to give you market updates, uh, talk about mindset and psychology, talk about building a life as a digital creator and how crypto can assist you in doing that. Um, make sure you're following both of us, please. And, you know, you mentioned Nagato, the algorithm on Instagram and kind of pushing your crypto content. It's really interesting because I had this week randomly, I don't know what's going on with the X algo. I've been growing maybe like 50 followers a day or something, which is solid. I'm happy with that. And then out of nowhere, I was just posting my normal routine. Basically, I had some stuff that was, you know, doing well, but nothing that went like giga viral or anything. And... Uh, Two days in a row, I got 350 followers a day this week. And then I went back to like 50, 30, 40, 50 followers a day, whatever. Um, so I don't know what happened with that. But I felt like it plugged me back in as like a crypto influencer in some way. Because I started tweeting about crypto again more consistently. And then the algo was like, oh, and it just started showing me to all these people. And there's clearly like a ton of social sentiment increase on uh, you know these different platforms with regards to... To crypto so i think that's definitely a good sign um and before we we dive into a couple of these other topics that we want to talk about bro i got a comment here from turby that's asking what is the having so i think um we should probably just address that real quick for people that are newer to the space is there's without getting too technical uh basically there are 21 million bitcoin that will ever be created I think about 19 million of those are already created. Um, they're created by the code, um, basically processing transactions. And every time a new, uh, these transactions are put on what's called a block, and there's a chain of them, hence blockchain. And every block that holds the transactions updates, you know, basically the ledger that says, I have one, Bitcoin, Nagato has five, and then I do a transaction, I send them half of one, and now Nagato has five and a half, and I have 0. 0.5. That goes in on a block, and then the block everyone verifies the block, and then it gets pushed to the blockchain, and it's official. And now everyone can see that in an open way, in a transparent way. And the people that verify it are called miners. You may have heard of like Bitcoin mining. They, those are people that dedicate computer power and electricity, and they actually pay their bills, like heavy electricity bills, to dedicate computer power and resources to the network to verify those transactions, right? And when they do that, they get rewarded a piece of Bitcoin that the code automatically creates. Every block, the, the Bitcoin blockchain creates new Bitcoin um, at a certain rate. And every four years, that rate that they're getting distributed gets cut in half. Every four, about every four years. It's more like by number of blocks, but it, it estimates out to about every four years. And what we've seen is that because of supply and demand economics, when supply goes down and demand stays the same or demand goes up, price goes up, right? That's just, that's just math. So if, you know, what we've seen is that in 2012, 2016, and 2020, those were all when the, the halvings were, when the new Bitcoin entering the market got cut in half on a dime. 
And those were catalysts for the bull markets that we've seen. And so now we're in 2024 and we have a halving that's estimated to come up in about one month from now. I think it's scheduled for April 19th is what it's looking like. And we're entering a, a bull market. And this is the first time that we've actually seen all-time highs in the Bitcoin price prior to the halving happening. So instead of the halving acting as a catalyst, we've actually front-run the halving largely in part to the Bitcoin ETF being approved in America and all this institutional money flowing in. So not only do we have all this big money coming in, but now we're expecting a supply shock to happen in April, which if it does what it has in the past, will act as again, another catalyst to kind of push this forward. And it also is obviously a great marketing tool just in and of itself, like being able to talk about it and get everyone understanding, you know, or reminding them at least that the limited supply of Bitcoin is one of its greatest features and that there's not a lot of this stuff to go around and it's getting less and less by the day. So that's the halving every four years, the amount of Bitcoin that enters the market on a block by block or daily basis gets cut in half and it creates the supply shock that has historically led to bull runs and an increase in price. Um, so I hope that helps. And and so Nagato, do you want to talk a little bit about, I mean, do you want to talk more about like meme coins and like strategy and mindset around that? Or do you want to talk uh, about some of the NPCs want, coming back? No, I, I want to talk first about something. So I saw that, um, wait, I lost. Oh, I saw um, Georgios, I think, um, is saying like, if you guys are, to, uh, are if you guys are taking profit, are you swapping to USDT or how do you scale out? So I wanted to like uh, answer to this question a bit, like in a quick way. So uh, my strategy at the moment is like uh, exiting the market fully uh, during euphoria. But before doing that, um, I think I will simply wait for Ethereum to make a new all-time high. And as soon as Ethereum makes a new all-time high, I will simply start to uh, reverse DCA my bag. Can so you explain that to people? Yeah. yeah. Reverse DCA means like uh, in, a, in a bear market, what you do to, to accumulate your bags, you do DCA. You do like dollar cost averaging. It means like if you have like, let's say, uh, $1,000 to uh, invest in the market, you don't just buy like $1,000 straight away on a specific day, you just spread it out to like multiple purchases to uh, get your price, like uh, to avoid like market like fluctuations and get like an average, an average entry price. I don't know if I explain it really well, but basically reverse DCA is the same thing, but like the opposite. When the market is going up, you don't want to sell like all your bags at a specific level. You simply just like scale out uh let's say btc is going up you sell a bit at like 60 a bit at 62 a bit at 64 so i'm gonna start doing this uh for my alts once ethereum breaks all time i i will sell probably like few percentages here and there uh maybe every week maybe every two week uh i don't know but i will do it slowly and then when i spot the uh, euphoria in the market like when i see like all the npc flowing back Everybody talking about crypto. Everybody like is becoming like crypto investor. The Uber driver is trading crypto while driving you to your destination and everything. That's when I will be scaling out like more aggressively, meaning that I win. I won't just sell like few percentages here and there. I will sell maybe like maybe ten percent every week or maybe even more than that until I sell probably like around ninety percent of my holdings, maybe ninety five percent, and then I will keep like five percent as a moon bag, but. This bull run, I'm really focused on like uh, pulling out like as much profit as I can, because last bull run I sold many uh, crypto, but not like as much as I would have liked to to sell. So that's my plan, and I think it's a re it's a nice strategy because yeah, you can try to like sell everything during euphoria, you can try to time the top, but it's not always like uh, a good decision in my opinion because like timing the perfect top would be dif difficult and everything. So yeah, maybe with this strategy, you, uh, how can I say, you don't get like as much profit as 
you would do like by timing the perfect top. But the chances of you, for you to time the perfect top are fucking slim. So this is like a safe strategy, stress-free, profit guaranteed, and I think it's not stupid at all. So I would I you recommend like you to to like do something similar for your holdings as well. Zero. What do you want to say? Yeah, um, I just want to to add something uh, to to the Greg uh, speech about the Alving, uh, which is uh, I, I mean Greg uh, perfectly explained the the Alving uh, technicism, but uh, th there's much more I think to to be evaluated, and uh, it's because Bitcoin uh, has broke above the uh, all-time high prior to the Alving, but also prior to the midpoint. And the midpoint uh, is estimated in October or November, I guess, this year. And uh, this outcome brings to consider a much shorter cycle, in my opinion, because it, it, that, that's how, that's how we, it works, you know. Uh, left translated cycle uh, compared to, to the right translated cycle, which means that it's shorter. So this is something that should be considered uh, for the ones that are waiting for 2025 to, to, to release the bags because, yeah, you know, the four-year cycle and so on. So take a look at this perspective because I, I think it will play out kind of well, especially considering the parabolic move that Bitcoin made during this, uh, uh, during this year and during the last year, about, uh, I don't know, more than 30 under percent so yeah this is something that should be considered in my opinion i agree with you bro and a couple of things first of all nagato was on my podcast back in may i think or june of last year and he basically said it's gonna happen faster than people think and i still think that holds true um you know, based on what Zero just said as well. So we're, we're already ahead of schedule. And I think, I, I can't imagine how, how the top happens in 2025. I just, I just think that this market moves way too fast. So what I think will happen, as most cycles do, is it will go higher than people think go, it will go, and it will go shorter than people think it will go. Because once you get that big burst up, and everyone's like, holy shit, it's different this time. And like, yeah, it is different this time with the ETF and everything, but still the, it's going to run to a point and it's going to go higher. So people are predicting like, Oh, 150 K. Like I'm not a price prediction guy, but this is just where my gut is at. Like people are saying like, Oh, 150 K or something like that is kind of the consensus. And I just think we're probably going to go much higher than that. I hope we do. I think we might, um, with Bitcoin and, but I think it will be for a very short amount of time. Um, like if you look at the 27, like 2017 bull run, I think might be a better indication. 2021 was kind of weird cause we had that double top, but 2021 we hit 10 K and everyone was like, holy shit. Like I never thought we would get to $10,000. And then within a week or within like two weeks, might've been one week, it went up to $20,000. And that was when everyone was like, holy fuck, like we're just never going to stop. Like it was just like an elevator and then it crashed. Right. And I, I think we might see something similar where we get like a run up to like 150 K or something. And then like within like a week or two, we're at like 210, 220, like something like that. And then everyone's oh. like, all right, 300, here we come type shit. And then it just fucking shits the bed. Like something you know, bro, like that. You know, bro, like usually the market is like a pendulum when it swings, you know, it goes like lower than everybody thinks. And then it goes like higher than everybody thinks, you know? So yeah. I, I, I agree with you. Like I, I, I really see BTC going like to past under K. I can say like probably for sure seeing what's happening right now. But yeah, I agree that everything would happen uh, much, much quicker than what we are used to. And that's why I'm saying like, um, if you're, especially if you're holding altcoins, if you apply my strategy, I think it's the best one because as soon as um, Ethereum starts to make a new all-time high and everything, you start slowly like uh, growing your like USDT bag and you'll never go wrong by taking profits, honestly. 
So even if the cycle is quicker, you already like have your profits and everything. So yeah, uh, like I, I want to add something more to the idea of seeing Bitcoin skyrocketing to uh, mega new highs and so on. Um, I think the ETF uh, is blinding many people because yeah, it's true that demand is real, okay? But at the same time, we don't have to forget that, uh, you know, um, ETFs and institutional investors are already sitting on mega much profits <laughs> compared to the, to the past, you know? They never experienced holding an asset that can make uh, multiple percentages in, in such a short time. So, uh, I don't know, uh, this is something that people probably uh, that don't like to to to, uh, to hear, but I'm expecting. Uh, uh, also, I hope to, to to be wrong, but I'm expecting a top much uh, much weaker than uh, most people expect. I don't know. My, my thesis is, is about 90k, probably uh, probably slightly uh, above, but uh, we don't have to underestimate that people that. Uh, investors are sitting on multi-billions profits so keep it in mind so you you think the top is 90k of this cycle is that what you just said bro he has been wrong like all the time so like you can use zero as a count uh, as a counter <laughs> indicator no so zero, say, zero is great like it says like 90k means that we, we go we run to double that easy here's here's the thing is that I don't think the people that are investing these like hedge funds and these, these, um, you know, we're soon we're going to get like sovereigns in there and like these multi-billion dollar entities and they're allocating like a certain percentage. I don't think they're really doing it for a six month or a three month trade that, that I don't, I mean, I don't have like first person or first party confirmation of that, but I don't really think that's how they operate, dude. I think they're trying to allocate to this for a longer period of time because they believe in what's happening in some respects so that, I mean, look, maybe there'll be some reallocation. Maybe they want a 1% and then it doubles to two and then they have to like start selling off to get, uh, you know, back to one to keep their, their investment. Right. But you're going to have other entities that are just like, Hey, we're at 2% and it's crushing. And the math is mathing that this thing can get a lot bigger over the next 10 years let's maybe we bump it to 4%. Like, I think that all kind of cancels itself out. Um, I can't, I mean, I can't imagine how 90K is the top. Um, that seems a little low to me. But I think either way, like, we're going to see a run-up and people are going to get excited. It's going to get euphoric. As soon as you, you turn that corner where you're feeling like, all right, one more pump and then I'm out, that's usually <laughs> when I found for me is usually when the top comes for like any particular token um, or market. It's like, I'm waiting for that one more run. And for me, you know, one indicator that's, that's been strong for me to uh, start taking profits is on the Bitcoin chart. If you look at the, the monthly RSI is usually like a good indicator. Once that gets into the 90s, is usually an interesting time to start thinking about taking some profits um, and and starting the, the dollar cost averaging, the reverse dollar cost averaging that Nagato is talking about, which is essentially just selling a set amount on a regular basis. Um, as you kind of go, as the market keeps going up, you chip off a little bit more, you chip off a little bit more. And then, you know, you don't kick yourself to say, oh, if I had just held all that stuff I was chipping off and I sold the top, then I have X amount more. No, it's like, no, because when it crash, once you're in these like extended ranges, once you're in these, like, you know, the, the, the buying momentum has gone so aggressive and you start scaling in there, even if it keeps pumping, that's great. Keep taking more profits. And then when the thing crashes and the market resets for another couple of years, you're going to have your, your, your price, your average price that you've gotten out at is you're going to be very happy with it. Okay, you're going to be happy. So even if it gets to um, 100K, well, we could just take last cycle, for instance, right? We topped at, let's call it 70K. And the old all-time high was 20. So we say we start moving into 20. 
the monthly RSI started going into the 90s around, let's see, it was around, yeah, right towards the top. So it was around like in the 50s. Um, so if you started scaling out in the 50s and then at like 50 and then at like 58, you took a little more and then 65, you took a little bit more, right? Then the market starts to go down. It pumps back up again for that double top. But even then, it's like maybe you got out 50 or 70% of your bag and it would have averaged around like 60K. So yeah, it's not 70K. You missed out on 15, you know, 14% or whatever that is. Uh, but your average price, it went, ended up going back down all the way to fucking 16K. So then you start to load your bags up again on the way down in dollar cost averaging mode. Okay, we're starting to get oversold now. You know, we've been dumping from 65, 70K down to 16K. You start adding, right? Start adding on the way down when things start to get really bleak. And that's how you play these markets. And it's like the beauty of crypto is it happens fast. You know, the Warren Buffetts of the world, the reason that he, he's such an anomaly is because he's had like insane patience and discipline to invest over bear markets that happened over decades, and it's like, that's very difficult to do. But with us, it's really not that hard. You just have to wait a couple of years. You know what I mean? And you wait a couple of years for this moment now. And so, um, Zero, go back to you, bro. Yeah, sorry, boys. I lost the mic <laughs> and I wasn't able to reply. Uh, yeah, I was meaning uh, that I expect the top uh, slightly less compared to to the common, uh, common beliefs. Okay, so... Uh, I'm already seeing people believing in a super cycle, people believing in uh, uh, huge numbers because uh, that does the, the ETF demand. And yeah, I, I'm kind of uh, suspicious of that. But in, in retrospect, that why, why though? I'm curious why. Uh, just, just because they, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the thing that the, the ETF okay, it is real, the demand is real, and, and, and that's for sure. But at the same time, um, investors aren't here to, to hold an asset, in my opinion, personal opinion, and I also hope to be wrong, but that's what I'm thinking. Uh, they aren't here to pump the bags of moon boys, and it's like, you know, it's logic that at some point, uh, people will start to enter and also enter to Bitcoin at much higher prices, probably 80k, 90k. I cannot expect them to outperform many investors because they buy at the top. Okay, so uh, th this is one main reason. The second reason uh, is that institutional investors that already bought uh, Bitcoin, le le let's. I don't know, let's make uh, 40K, okay? They, they're sitting on gazillions of trillions of fucking money of profits, okay? And they're not here to... to, to they, they don't have the, the, the moon boy mentality and waiting for the price to, to jump. Uh, I don't know how much price is, okay? Uh, people expect them to, to continue to, to the buy pressure and yeah, the ETF will pump everything. But at some point, we don't have to, to forget that uh, investors and institutional investors, especially, uh, you know, <laughs> they want to capitalize and they become sellers at some point. And yeah, this is something that personally, uh, I think a lot. And there's also a much wider perspective uh, on the global liquidity index, which I'm, I'm <laughs> making the post now for tomorrow. And this is something that is should be on everyone's radar, in my opinion, uh, because the global uh, liquidity index expect to peak in uh, I think late 2025. But <laughs> there's the problem of the uh, U.S. national debt that is continuing to, to to rise. Okay, and this is problem. This is a big problem that is uh, going below and uh, under the radar. Okay. Uh, I personally expect some kind of a black swan in 2025. And <laughs> this is not crazy to think, but the global liquidity index and the liquidity overall will help institutional investors to buy a potential black swan because the, the, the global liquidity index favors this, okay? So 
you can say that <laughs> these might be conspiracy theorists or I don't know, but uh, I, I always uh, love to, to make some, uh, some overthinking and trying to, to, to think like a whale, okay? Uh, also, hope to be wrong. Bro, but, you are a whale. Okay, <laughs> yeah, fuck you. <laughs> but uh, seriously, hope to, to be wrong and uh, I, I don't know, the, the, the market will pump above every, every my uh, expectation, but uh, this, is, uh, this is what I think. Yeah. Nagato, so, you want to respond? Uh, yeah, I want to say something. So basically, Zero said that like um, maybe some NPCs will buy BTC at like 70, 80, 90k. And he said like you won't expect like those NPC to make money and outperform like a uh, more educated investor and everything. But always remember that the NPCs that we buy uh, BTC at 70, 80, 90, 100K, they won't take in any fucking profit. So yeah, they will make like paper profit. So like on paper at first, yes, they will perform maybe some investment funds and everything, but they won't take any fucking profit. So they will run everything back to their entry and then they will become bag holders and everything. So I don't really agree with that take uh, of zero, but I do agree that... Um, this cycle will end like sooner than everybody expect. And my vision is that the top will be between what you guys think. Like will be higher than 90, but less than 200. So 150 maybe can be a nice number. But as I always said, like, I don't give a fuck about predicting like the exact number because like, it's just like a guessing game. I prefer to like simply look at the charts, look at like euphoria, try to spot euphoria. Uh, in people around me, euphoria in the world. And when I see that the chart is going parabolic, everybody wants to buy and everything, I would simply sell. I don't give a fuck about like the, the perfect price, like the exact price and everything. This is just speculation. So I think, yeah, it's nice to like talk about like our potential scenarios and everything. But I think it's a bit of time wasted, uh, focusing too much on like a potential top price and everything, in my opinion. Yeah, that's correct. In any case, we are here uh, just guessing, you know. No, nobody, nobody has the the, the crystal ball uh, predicting the future. These are all guessings, and uh, the, the most important thing is just to uh, work, as I always say, uh, work level by level, uh, seeing how the markets and how the, the price action responds to to key areas. To, to individuate potential strength or potential weakness. In any case, uh, I think we <laughs> we are primed uh, to, to to make great things, regardless which is, which can be the, the price of Bitcoin. Okay, so altcoins will perform well, and these are amazing opportunities, in my opinion, before uh, we pick. So, in any case, we we will do well. I hope so. <laughs> So if you're just joining us, you're listening to Wi-Fi Money with Greg and Nagato. We got Zero up here as well, offering some insights. We're just kind of touching on the bull market that we are clearly entrenched in here in crypto. And uh, I, Nagato, if you want, uh, I think we can have some people come up and ask some questions. Do you want to do that? We're about 50 minutes in here. Um, uh, yeah, uh, guys, uh, last thing. Uh, I wanted to, <laughs> to say hello to everyone. But I need to I need to go uh, now. So uh, it was a pleasure to come up on stage just for for a few minutes. Okay, and yeah, we we will see you soon. Yeah, brother. Thank you for coming through and contributing. See you, G. Thank you. Yeah. So if you guys wanna, uh, oh yeah, what do you think, Nagato? No, I'm just saying like either like Q and A or want to talk like weekly about NPCs. Like honestly, I, I have time, but up to you. Yeah, let's uh, let's take a few questions. You can you can go on a little NPC uh, rant if you like about when do you think they're coming back in the market or, or what the questions you've been getting around that. No, if you yeah. guys want to come up on stage um, on the bottom yeah. left here, make sure to hit the microphone and uh, we'll get you up here to ask a few questions. Uh, make sure you're following both me and Nagato. And even if you don't want to come up on stage, please follow us. We're going to be doing these rooms on a regular basis now. We're bringing the show back. Hell, we might even go more than once a week if it goes well. So um, we're going to have a bunch of great guests. Uh, Wi-Fi Money is here to stay. So 
Uh, Nagato, why don't you go ahead, bro? Should I make like a little rant about NPCs? Yeah, man, whatever you want. Mm, like, I, I've received like, I, I tweeted something about this like a few days ago, and I've been receiving this question like, with the increasing uh, cost of living, unemployment rates, inflation, and everything, will you think a, that NPCs will come back to buy the top of this market and boost liquidity and give us like exit liquidity and everything? And my answer is fucking yes. Fucking yes. Because like when NPCs uh, will smell easy money, they are in. Even if they are broke as hell, they will find a way to get funds. Like they always do that with gambling, with uh, drugs, alcohol and everything. Like if they want to find the money, they find it. Uh, and I made a tweet like one hour ago and talking about like uh, OnlyFans, for example. Uh, NPCs in 2022, they spent 2.2 billion fucking dollars on OnlyFans. Basically to see some titties online. Okay? Yeah, actually, why don't you tell people what NPCs are? I don't know if everyone knows what that means. So have you ever played like a video game? There are like the main characters, which are like players. Like you play a video game, you are the main character. You go around and do things. And the NPCs are basically all the other characters that are like in the video games doing basically nothing. Like they yeah, just it stands like for non non player characters. Like when you yeah. go up to fucking someone and you ask them, you press like, A to ask them a question. All the people, the like if you if you play GTA, like all the people are like they are going around town in GTA, like driving cars, like doing like normal shit in GTA. You cannot interact with them. Basically, they're you're the just sheep. like they're the sheep. They're the the ones sheep that, like, they don't think for themselves. They're pre programmed. Yeah. And when I talk like, about NPC. yeah. When I talk about NPC, uh, I talk about like the people that they're living life in, on autopilot. They're basically just like go to work, eat food, have sex, seek cheap dopamine, and that's it. That sounds you pretty know? sick, actually, bro. Yeah, it's sick, buddy. What it is? So is there sex? I can get sex if I'm an NPC. Is that how it works? I mean, you can get titties on OnlyFans. Oh, true, true. <laughs> I gotta look anyway, up. yeah, they, they spent like 2.2 billion in 2022 just to see some titties online and you don't think you they will be able to find money to buy like uh, the top of this crypto bull run? I don't fucking think so. You know, like they will think about more, more money means like more. so instead of like having like titties right now, they will buy crypto hoping to have more titties in the future. So that will be bad guys. No... Not, don't worry about that. They will just like fucking join the market when it's going parabolic once again. They will put like their life savings. They will like even some of them they will, they will even like like uh, get into debt in order to buy crypto. They will ask for loans and everything. Like it happened many times in the past. It, it will happen again, like guaranteed. And especially like, you know, right now crypto is a bit like mainstream, meaning like pretty much like everybody on this fucking planet knows something about crypto. At least like they've, they've heard once in their lifetime about BTC and everything. So everybody on this planet right now, they have like a friend that's investing in crypto. We can say that at least one friend in your circle. If it's not you, you have a, at least one friend that is buying crypto at the moment. And I call this like the crypto friend effect. So you have a, a, a guy in your circle that is investing in crypto. And after a while that you see like him making money, you want to just fucking jump into crypto. And that's what happens with the NPCs. They see like their, friend, their friends like making a bit of money in crypto, then making more money, making even more money. And they get excited. And at first like, they ignore you. But then after they see you making money, they jump in. And usually when they jump in, it's like uh, close to the top of the cycle. But NPCs always fucking do that. I was one of them. I'm not an NPC anymore. So I, I know how they think because I was one of them and Greg was one of them too. Right, never. Greg? I was never an NPC. <laughs> no, no, no. But now you got me. You thinking. were. And maybe, maybe. Um, 2017, I found Bitcoin. It changed my life. Seriously, not just same, time, but like it just makes you look at the world in an entirely different way. Yeah. It makes you study money, understand how the banks work. Like things I never yeah. thought were interesting are now hella interesting. And then it yeah. kind of just opens the door to like the whole system's rigged and it kind of leads you down just a different way of thinking. Um, not to mention like the, the circles that you get put into, like getting me to meet people like you and other free thinkers, independent thinkers. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot of things that happen. Um, 
when you start understanding and thinking critically about this technology, it's kind of, it's attracting all the best minds in the world. And, um, it's Absolutely. been a real blessing. So, uh, CMT fitness. What's up, man? Hey guys. Thank you uh, very, very much for, uh, letting me speak here. And I think I'm actually the perfect segue to this because I got into crypto as an NPC at the, literally at the absolute peak of the last bull cycle. And I, 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 I held everyone's bag, but thankfully I just dollar cost averaged everything throughout the whole entire bear market. So I didn't have any actual realized losses and now I'm finally up, but this will be my first actual start of the bull cycle. So one of my questions is, at what point, um, obviously, obviously there's different time frames, but once Bitcoin hits whatever its top actually is, is it like an immediate shift to ETH hitting its all-time top, or is there usually some level of like, you know, let's just say 7 to 14 days or something like that, um, like between each little phase from uh, Bitcoin all-time high ETH all time high, and then you know the rest of the altcoins and, and meme coins. Uh, so that was the first question. I think that would help, of course, me, but a lot of the beginner and intermediate level traders to kind of understand that distinction and kind of what previous bull cycles have done. Yeah, I can take a shot at this first, and then you can jump in, Nagato. Um, you know, it's not just that. Bitcoin runs up all the way to the top and then it transfers over and then ETH runs all the way and then meme coins. It's more like there's a, there's a rotation that happens multiple times as Bitcoin goes all the way up as is what we've seen. So it's more like Bitcoin will make a 30% move. It'll chill sideways as people like some people are buying in cause they're moving, you know, want to get into the move. Some people are selling to take profits to move it over. And so as it's chopping, then you'll see like ether the altcoins start to run and then it'll go back to bitcoin then maybe they all go down together and then maybe they all go up together and then bitcoin goes sideways and the altcoins go again like there's these rotations that happen and so by the time bitcoin hits the top you don't know that it's at the top because you're waiting for the next altcoin pump right then and you might even get the altcoin pump but then everything just goes down so it's not as simple i think i if i understood your question was kind of like you know does it just go bitcoin and then it all moves over. And then how long is that movement? It's more like that happens multiple times. And so you never know which is the final time, let's say. Um, so far, we haven't really seen an altcoin move at all yet. If you look at the, uh, to if you go to TradingView and you look at the um, ticker total two, you can see a crypto total market cap excluding Bitcoin. And right now, if I take... The percentage from where we're at currently, well, let's just say where we got to this week, the high of this week, uh, we're still about 35% away from the all-time high. So, uh, you know, we Ethereum you know, hasn't hit its all-time high. Basically, nothing that was around last cycle has had an all-time high. I think BNB is getting pretty close. Um, Solana is making its way up, but none of these altcoins have really breached it yet. So... Um, we still have a ways to go, but I don't think that there's like one move that it's like, okay, this is the top. Otherwise, if we all knew it was the top and it was moving over and we had this amount of time, if it was that easy, um, you know, it would be easy. But what I would just say one other thing would be, um, one is go to trading view and kind of like do some, like play around yourself and kind of like look at dates bring up a couple of charts next to each other of like the ETH BTC chart and the Bitcoin chart and see kind of over time, like what different uh, movements ETH has had in comparison to Bitcoin. And then I would also follow one of my favorite YouTube follows is Benjamin Cowen, C-O-W-E-N. And he has some really unique perspectives and creates a lot of these proprietary models for tracking charts and looking at um, different comparisons just like that and, and how the markets, uh, the Bitcoin market kind of plays off of itself over time and the different risk levels and things like that. So a lot of unique insights over there too. Nagato. I just want to say something real quick. You said like, how do I, like, 
uh, how much time do I have to like uh, maybe sell my alts after BTC tops and everything? But it's not really like a nice, a great question in my opinion, because like a top for BTC will never look like a top. If you look, if you go and see at the past, yeah, maybe BTC look topish, but like usually like in my opinion, a top is something that happens like real fucking quick. So how do you know that that's the top, you know, makes sense what I'm trying to say, Greg. Yeah, it's never and, easy to sell the top. That's and, why the and how, how, how do you know that that that's a top and not just like uh, a local top and then we go higher, you know? So in my opinion, the best strategy is always like reverse DCA. It's the same thing you do in the in in the bear market, but in reverse. And yeah, you won't be able to time the exact top, but who gives a fuck? You are like, we are going up, and you're scaling out your your profits. So like. Even like if the market like um, top before you think, after you think and everything, you still have your uh, USDT bag. So don't like try to spot the top and don't try to like, yeah, I will spot the top in BTC and I will try to play it, blah, blah, blah. Like just fucking DCA out and chill. That's my opinion. We are not like, we are investors. We are not really day traders or something. Like you, you don't have to like, perfectly pick the right levels and everything like as long as you like follow the trend and you take profit along the way up you you would be fine totally fine in my opinion did that help bro yeah that definitely helped uh and i appreciate the the responses um i know there's i'm sure there's a bunch of other people that would like to ask questions i do want to just ask one more question and then you know at any point if you want to respond to it that would be great um since you guys are the experts what is your opinions on Solana potentially overtaking Ethereum as kind of like the, the, the second man in charge, not necessarily this bull cycle, but down the road. So I think that's something that um, I think would be interesting to see what your thoughts are, but I'm going to turn my mic off and then at whatever point, if you want to respond to that, I would appreciate it. Um, thanks again. And I, I appreciate everything you guys do. Yeah, no problem. Um, so Solana is at an $85 billion market cap. Ethereum is at a $440 billion market cap. And Solana has also been running like a fucking madman. Um, look, Solana is the hot thing right now. I think it's very, very difficult to have any clue what's going to happen with the L1s, how that's going to shake out over like a longer period of time. Um, the technology is so nascent and like... Dude, Solana like literally like shuts down sometimes. It's very odd. Um, so it's got it's definitely got the narrative going right now, and it's it's cheap and it's fun with the memes and all that stuff. Um, it's really difficult to say <laughs> like if anything is gonna like the problem with ETH is that it could it could die by like death from a thousand cuts from like all these other L ones. I don't know if there's going to be like a layer one that just becomes like the the top thing because they all have like different use cases um, and different pros and cons. And there's going to be a lot of technologies that are built across different ecosystems. Like once interoperability is enabled, like there, it's not just going to be, okay, you have to be in the Ethereum ecosystem or the Solana ecosystem. It's going to use different attributes from different blockchains and be able to connect and create more multi-chain applications and things like that. So personally, I don't, re I don't really think too much about the L ones and like how they compete with each other. Cause I don't think there's going to be like a top dog, uh, per se. I think there's just a lot of them that have different use cases, um, and different communities are going to build for different reasons on them. Um, having said that Solana is definitely, you know, one of the, the top guys right now, as far as momentum, um, like I'm looking at, so, uh, you know, Solana and AVAX are both up 30% this week. You know what I'm saying? Like Solana is up, um, today even, which is like, he's up 7% today. So it's running really hard. Makes me a little nervous for short term, but long term, I think it's really tough to say between the different L ones. Um, we do have a bunch of other questions here. Um, unless you had any like, hardcore thoughts on that Nagato let's let's move it along yeah 
Yeah, you said it all, bro. You said it all. All right. Nothing bet. to add. Uh, let's go to Stefan here. What's up, man? Hello. Uh, can you guys hear me well? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, thanks. Um, well, thank you for um, for all the knowledge that you guys uh, have been passing on over the last few months, uh, especially to Nagato because I've been following him for a couple of years now and um, he has been doing a great job. Uh, anyway, my only question is, um, are you guys expecting like a, a crash before we move up uh, higher? Because we have been going up for a few months and um, uh, usually uh, if you check the charts, we go down um, at least for three months before moving up higher. So I would like to know what uh, what you guys think it's going to happen uh, right before the Alping and um, after the Alping as well. Should I take it, Greg? Yeah. Okay, so in my opinion, uh, this cycle is a bit different if compared to the other ones. So you, you shouldn't really base your analysis too much of... Uh, on what's hap what happened in the past. In my opinion, uh, what we are going to see right now uh, before the Alving is um, what I'd like to see, honestly, is BTC going sideways between, let's say, the the, um, the old all-time high, so around like 60... I, I'm on the weekly chart, though, the old all-time high closure... So 65 something to like 70 something like ranging there and chilling for a while to build like a bit of support here. And then like after the Alving, uh, I, I see it really going up, up, not really. I don't see like a big crash coming and everything. I really see like BTC just chilling around this region. Yeah, there will be a lot of volatility, like a lot of shakeouts and everything, but it, it's going to range a bit. Similar to what happened in the like 40... 40 to 45 region we had like a few weeks of like consolidation there i think it's the same it's going to happen right now and in the meantime i really see some halts to catch up a bit and then after btc is ready i think it's going to go up more like i don't see like a big crash post being and everything like we, we have seen in the past because i don't think that this bull run will take like that long to to top you know like to 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 get to the actual top. So I think it would be like, yeah, a bit of consolidation and then like another impulse to to break like the all time high and go higher, probably reach like around like 100K or something in the summer. That's what I think. Like, of course, like don't take this as a financial advice and everything, but I don't really see like a, a big, big crash coming soon. But of course, like it's, I highly recommend you to get some like stables on on the side. So if we get the crash, it's like a blessing. It's like a fucking great opportunity. You can scale in more and increase your position. But in my opinion, like what, what I said before, this is old and see season. Uh, I'm not trying to play the market like too aggressively. I'm just chilling because I think that everything is going much higher. Yeah, there will be shakeouts along the way up. Big shakeouts probably, but we are going higher. I don't see like BDC going down for like three months straight, like, it's not gonna happen in my opinion. We told like the, the bullish things coming, uh, the ETFs inflows, uh, the Alving also. I don't really think so, honestly. Greg, you want to add something? Yeah, I mean, the only thing that's interesting is that we've seen, uh, this is our seventh green month in a row on Bitcoin. Um, I'd have to look back and see if that's ever happened before uh, from a quick scan here. I don't think it has. I think six is the, the most. So um, now granted, so let's say we've gone from, yeah, it's like 170% or something we've moved in six months. With well, no, actually, actually one month, one, did two, we? three, four, the fifth month is not really that green. Like, yeah, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit green, but yeah, just 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 a bit. So yeah, yeah. We opened that month at forty two two and closed yeah, it yeah. at forty two five. So it was basically sideways. Um, but uh, yeah, you could consider that sideways because that was in the midst of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, basically eight weeks just going sideways that crossed over like two different months. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a little bit of consolidation there. That's fair. Um, yeah. And the monthly RSI that I told you I look at, like I don't even consider selling. 
until we've entered the 90s on that. Um, and we're currently at uh, right around 75. So um, there's definitely some more room to run. I wouldn't try and make too many predictions. Again, I'm with Nagato here. It's hold and chill season. And then maybe if it, if there is a, you know, a dump of any kind, you can add a little bit because this, this bull moose still has a lot left to go. Um, okay. We got a bunch more questions. I can't stay on all day. I got maybe another 15, 20 minutes, bro. Um, so let's go here to Frankie and then quant man. All right, cool. You guys hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for doing this, guys. Appreciate all the insight. Um, Nagato, got to shout you out. You're the first crypto influencer I've been following uh, since before I got on crypto Twitter. I've been trying to uh, sift through all the noise here on X, but uh, you guys definitely make it easier. So one question I had for you guys, um, and I ask this a lot, and I get mixed reviews. What do you guys think about um, like revenue generating models? or actual profitability in projects as being a driving force for, you know, upward price movement, um, or just being something that people start putting eyes on in general. Everyone's hyped up about this or that, Oracle's interoperability. Um, and then as far as actually having a project that generates money, I think Rollbit, you know, made a lot of noise in the space um, because of how much money they were bringing in. Um, what, what are you guys' thoughts on that? If I'm making myself, I hopefully I explained that okay. So more of like investing in like real businesses and kind of like how how crypto turns into less of like a hype thing and more of like actual sustainable businesses. Yeah. And like, do you, do you see that becoming like a narrative in and of itself or like a point, you know, like kind of like a selling point? Because um, I think right now a lot of it's, you know, low transaction costs, um, you know, is a big driving force behind price movement. Everyone gets excited about that. Um, token burns, that kind of thing. Um but I think as we progress as an industry, you know, do you guys foresee, you know, an actual profitable, sustainable revenue generating business model as being a driving force for hype and excitement um, and being like a, a motivator for upward price movement or like a narrative in and of itself? Yeah, I mean, for me, bro, um, I think that all has to do with the larger market sentiment and like the economy in general. So what in my opinion, will, uh, is most likely to happen is that like we'll probably see some like major crash overall, and then the thing, the things in crypto that come back and survive that will be the things that are actually like real businesses generating real money that have actual utility. Um, but I don't think that you know in when we're in this like hype cycle where everything's making new all time highs, the S and P is at all time, all this stuff, and everyone's still like we're all kind of nervous and walking on eggshells, but we're all making money. Like, I don't see where people are like, Oh, well that crypto business is a business. That's a hype cycle. Like no one's going to get excited about that. They're going to get excited about wherever the fucking sexy narrative is, the AI or whatever metaverse, whatever the next thing is. Um, for me, the utility of the tokens or the companies comes into play and the revenue they generate comes into play getting off the bottom of an inevitable economic downturn that we will see like within the next, who knows, 12 to 36 months or something like that. Like whatever, like they will be the ones that rise from the ashes, right? We'll be the ones that are actually doing something. Then that'll be a narrative. It'll be, Oh wow. This is a real fucking thing. Fuck all this other dot com bubble bullshit where every crypto token was popping just because it had Kanye's face on it or whatever. It's like now we need to think about like that there's gonna be an entire mind shift versus just like it's a narrative. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I completely totally. agree with you. Yeah. I completely agree with, with you, Greg. Like same as that like same that happened with the dot com bubble. Like the dot com bubble exploded and then like serious businesses they flourished, you know? Same thing will happen with, with crypto. Like I can see like regulations coming soon that will kill like most crap in this space, in my opinion. And the project that will survive, there will be the utility tokens. And those tokens will generate real revenue and become real company. The next Google, the next Amazon and everything. That's what I think. So right now, everybody just following, try to follow like the next shiny object. They don't really care about like revenue generating uh, companies. 
in my opinion. But in the future, they, they will care. Because in the future, I think there will be like more sophisticated investor in this space. It won't be like anymore for like just gamblers, you know? Right now, it's like a bit of like the, the Wild West, you know? That's my opinion also. Yeah, I'm with you, bro. Yeah. Um, good question, Frankie. Um, yeah. Okay, we had uh, someone else leave the stage. So let's take two more questions here. Um, if that's cool with yeah, you. Yeah, I, I have to go. Yeah, I have to go to watch Solo Leveling, new episode. Yeah, we'll go in like 10 minutes, yeah? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Oh, uh, what did you say? New episode of what? Yeah. Of solo leveling, it's like an anime I'm watching right now. Oh, and gotcha. A new, a new episode just came out a few minutes ago, so I have to watch it. Oh, is that why you changed your uh, your bio on X? Just ripping oh, yeah. off a fucking anime, another anime? Probably, yes. <laughs> Dude, if I start an anime, then you'll probably just rip me off. So that's your whole brand, dude. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm surprised you doxed yourself. You guys see his pinned tweet? Look at this guy. You got it. He can't even afford new jeans. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I love you, dude. Let's go to Dagnum. What's up, man? Yo, yo. Uh, thanks for having me up. Uh, appreciate this. Uh, we definitely need more education like this in this space because uh, it's it's like the Wild West. And, you know, it's full of uh, memes and, and hot garbage. But to pick up on what you guys were talking about, about the real utility uh, starting to shine, um, I think we're already seeing that right now. Um, and it's one of the projects that I've actually been talking about for a while, Alchemy. Uh, so they're a layer two uh, scaling solution for Ethereum. But, you know, w what they're doing, I think, is the future. So, uh, you know, what these guys did is they took a traditional advertising exchange model and they put that on on chain so everything is transparent uh it it's it's way more cost effective and and how it's uh utility is these guys are taking 100 percent of the revenue that they earn from uh companies like amazon and coca-cola yes these are real people that are using this exchange for uh advertising bids they're taking 100% of that revenue that they make in fiat, and then they buy back the uh, ads token. And since uh, Alchemy is the largest uh, holder of the token in the liquidity pool, this is how they make revenue, right? So I get this question all the time, like, okay, well, if they're taking 100% of the, of the profits that they make from Coca-Cola, how are these guys making any money? And they're making money because they buy back the ads token on the open market and they stake that in the uh, liquidity pool. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a, a great project. Uh, I did the research on it like a few months ago, a few years ago also. I don't even remember. But yeah, I wasn't saying that like there are not like um, projects right now that are generating revenue and everything. But I was just saying that in the future, like there will be like more projects, and also people will base like uh, fundamental analysis on that thing. Whether right now it's mostly just like speculation. That's what I was saying. But yeah, there are oh, yeah, of course there yeah. are projects. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just piggybacking off of that because I agree with oh. you. You know, like uh, right now, it's it, it's it's filled like everybody's looking for attention, right? And so it it's hard to ignore a lot of the attention that that some things are getting. Like uh, you guys were talking about Solana, uh, you know that it's it, it, you know it, it's pumping. Uh, but the reason why that's pumping specifically, in in my opinion, is because it's just uh, VC money. Like these guys want. Uh, their their money back like that that network is absolute trash in in my opinion like it doesn't have these super fast transactions i've already pointed that out many times um that the consensus uh you know it, it, the tps that those guys are, are promoting is inflated it's just uh you know nodes uh talking to each other it's not actual transactions on the network uh, but, you know, I don't want to go down that, that, that rabbit hole, you know, here. Um, but, but it's hard, right? And so you got your degenerates, uh, like you guys were talking about earlier, 
that are just look, looking to make money and they're just throwing money at, you know, at stuff without, without even thinking about it. And that's where people are going to get wrecked. You know, just like in 2021, I told everybody on the planet, and I got a lot of shade from this ab about strong, right? And I was, I, you know, because some people were trying to tell me about strong, and I looked at it, and it didn't make any sense to me, like a zero sense. And, um, I, I, you know, I told people, I said, look, this thing is going to fucking implode, and you're going to get wrecked if you keep buying it. And everybody loved to laugh at me while it was going up to, like, whatever it was, a thousand bucks. And I'm like, I'm telling you guys this this thing is uh is a scam and then you know we it's a fucking scam it's strong isn't going anywhere it's never coming back um but yeah i think the the future of uh distributed ledger technology will be real businesses um uh, uh building on this and and driving real revenue we're not quite there yet, and yes, there's a couple of uh, uh, tokens right now that are generating, like uh, Quant. I know you guys are both big in, in Quant. That's another one uh, that's that's driving, uh, you know, real revenue. Yeah, first, uh, cross off Quant on your bingo cards for uh, this space today. I was trying to refrain. Um, but yeah, no, I agree with you, Bill. I think we're um, we're probably a cycle away. Uh, because it's the, the industry is still awaiting standards. I mean, that's really what it comes down to is you can't have uh, a global adoption of, you know, basically a new layer of the internet is essentially what we're, we're trying to build here. And there's still a lot of understanding and standardization and regulation that needs to get into place before that takes shape. Um, and that's going to happen over the next three years. So, uh, maybe two years. Um, so as that happens, yeah, I think we probably see some sort of reset as well as they try to push CBDCs on us and they kind of, um, you know, the only way that people are going to adopt a new monetary policy overall is if they put us into some like fucked up dystopia problem, um, and I'm sure it's all scripted out already. They already have a whole plan of how they're going to break the system in a way that encourages people to get on board with like, hey, we're here to save you. See all this stuff? We're here to save you. Here, take this, take that. And then uh, when it comes to tokenization, um, you know, none of this stuff is really going to matter. Um, this top 100 is going to be flipped on its head. And you're probably going to have, you know, 10 or 15 projects that are actually doing real things that are making big impact across the world. And then you'll start to see new ones get added that are also like, it's going to be about, are you a business or not? Not, do you have a community or not? No one gives a fuck about, you know, there's no community for email protocol. Do you know what I mean? There's no community for fucking HTTP to, to have your browser display websites. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, there, I'm not saying community doesn't matter. But I shouldn't say that because this is a bit different. There is ownership involved. And so you can do cool things, but that's not going to be the primary driver. Like community should be built on top of functional revenue generating protocols that are real businesses that are operating within a structure that's standardized. It's not going to be, Oh, community first Shiba Inu. And then let's figure out, Oh yeah, let's make a DEX. Like it doesn't make sense. It's, it's ass backwards. So, um, we're probably just still a couple years away. So for now, there's still this is probably the last chance I would say over these next couple of years to make real money on bullshit. Um, but if you're looking for more of an investment, you don't really want to look at what's the momentum on the RSI. Oh, I don't want to sell the top or buy the bottom or figure out the new layer one or any of the. If us all sounds like gibberish to you, like that's yeah, look at the stuff that's really making money in our real businesses, or just buy fucking Bitcoin and just sit on your hands and. You know, just buy the dip. Yeah, no, I, you're you're exactly right, and this shit is is coming, and it it's inevitable. And not not only is the writing on the wall, but these dudes already have a timetable. Uh, if you paid at any attention to what was happening at the G20 summit, you know these these guys, uh, you know these globalists, they they have a, a, a timeline for like 2027. 
is is when they want to implement all, all this stuff. I mean, um, they they want uh, you know this fully automated uh, you know CBDCs, all, all, you know all, all this stuff. Um, and you know, there's a conversation to be had, like whether or not <laughs> that th th these things are good or bad. Uh, and right now, I think that there's uh, you know a fight between uh, you know the centralized aspect of distributed ledger technology and then the dis the decentralized. You know, uh, I was having this debate with with somebody else. You know, there's there's a lot of networks that claim decentralization, but uh, the only one outside of Bitcoin is uh, nobody. I, I don't think. I don't think any facts. Uh, facts. Yeah. It, it, so these networks that claim to be decentralized are just uh, distributed, and people don't really understand the difference between a distributed system and a, and a decentralized system. Uh, you know, lots of people are claiming to be decentralized, but they're not. And then others, you know, are saying that they have a path to uh, decentralization. Yeah, that's just a buzzword at this point. And um, when people try to argue, like even Ethereum, people will be like, well, it's, it's like, dude, fucking protocols on Ethereum were getting shut down when Amazon Web Services went down, like in the Northeast. It's like all that takes is one government fucking notice to, and it's not to say that it can't, it could be shut down permanently, um, but the network parts of the network can go down based on just like where they're hosting their nodes and things. They're they're very centralized in the node structure, so you know. And I'm not I'm not a huge uh, you know I'm not an engineer or developer. I can't really get much deeper than that. But it's very obvious to me that um, Bitcoin is a is a the only decentralized system that I can see, or or close enough to it that could be called that. So anyone that's trying to sell you on decentralization on the like we're the new decentralized that it's like go fuck yourself, dude. Um, that's why I think, you know, my, my allocation, my two biggest holdings are Bitcoin and quant. And i fully recognize that Bitcoin is my decentralized play, the people's money and quant is my centralized play, the fucking lizard banker, banker coins play. And it's like, those are going to be at battle and I have a stake on both sides and maybe they can coexist. I think they will. And we can all win, but like, don't pretend, don't trick yourself that you're going to have the next decentralized winner because all like the DeFi stuff and all that, those are all just going to be like those protocols and those structures, the best, like they're in like these um, kind of proof of concept and experimentation is really what they are. And then the big guys with the big money are just going to take those concepts and just integrate them into more centralized banking and give you like decentralized um, quote unquote options within a centralized system. That's kind of what well, Overledger is in a sense. Is like uh, I think of it as. Um, so here's here's the difference, and then we'll take one more question. Um, if you guys aren't following me and Nagato, please do that. You're listening to Wi-Fi Money. This is the new crypto show, and we're going to come here and just kind of help you guys navigate this bull market because we're entering into some really interesting times, and there's a lot going on. Um, we really appreciate you listening. Um, the way I think about it, when it comes to like these, uh, really what what Quan has called it is kind of like this CDFI. It's like centralized, decentralized finance, and that means that so with Bitcoin, anybody can participate in the network at any time, and the network can't be shut down, and you know it fully operates based on like a peer to peer system essentially. Um, that's decentralized. Centralized is going to be like you just log in to like your chase app or whatever. And it's just like everything there is like, you need approval basically to even move money from one account to another. You know, you need to use Zelle and you need to like do all this stuff. Everything is like, there's a middleman. And then you have like a centralized decentralized where it's kind of both combined, which is I think what the future holds where essentially with like over ledger, it's like you, or which is Quant's product, which I just use because I'm more, most familiar with it, but I'm sure there will be many other examples, is like you need permission and you need to pay to get into the network. And then once you're in there, you have more of like a permissionless um, way to use it. So I don't need a necessary, like if me and Nagato and Dagnum are all inside that network, we can freely trade and do things as we want according to whatever rules they've set. But we still need to like, it's like you go to a bar 
And it's like, you need to get past the bouncer first. And then once you're in the bar, you can have a good time versus like all those people on Bitcoin that are just like partying in the park over there next door with like no cops. Right. Or I guess there's some cops um, like you have to abide by the rules of the city, maybe, which would be like the world or the regulations or whatever. But anyone can go to the park and anyone can just hang out um, versus like going into like a high bar, a high class bar where you have to get past the bouncer and like you need to be 21 and you need to blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's the centralized, decentralized finance that I think is, is coming our way where it's like you need to show your ID at the door kind of thing. Um, and that's why I think like people that are against or think that they can get around like KYC and all that, like that's all coming. Like there's not going to be even your Bitcoin wallets, like unless you're pretty smart about it, if you're using any kind of off ramps and on ramps with exchanges, they're going to start learning and creating like mind maps of who owns what wallets and who's doing what with who. And with, and you guys, first of all, they're hiring like tens and thousands, tens of thousands, about hundreds of thousands of agents. But here's the real thing. Once they implement AI and now we've all seen this, you know, the, the initiation of AI into society and how smart it is and how easy it can figure things out. All they have to do is slap some fucking AI and fig they can figure out who has what wallets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they can, they, I, I can tell you uh, from a firsthand account, they can, they can already do that right now. And it takes two seconds and it takes two, literally two seconds. I saw this live uh, because I was uh, a, a victim of a, uh, of, of an NFT scam uh, uh, last year. And uh, somebody from my community hooked me up with somebody at the FBI. Uh, the, I did I, I watched this live the fucking mind map came up instantly and th this was the wildest shit, shit i've ever seen and he's like oh yeah we know about these guys they're uh, based out of uh, north korea and you know this is all the shit and didn't it was just like bam instant and i was like holy fuck this is uh, insane uh, but yeah they can do that right now yep crazy so don't try and s skip on your taxes either because you're going to be fucked. Um, Nagata, you want to take one more? Or did you want to add on to that? Uh, not really. You said it all. We can, we can take one more if you want. For me, it's fine. All right, bet. Let's go to... Uh, I'm going to butcher your name, bro. Jatin Sapani. What's up, man? So, hello, Greg and Nagato. So, I just want to ask, like, uh, what percentage of po your, of your portfolio are you going to be planning to sell, uh, like planning to save for euphoria? And also, like, how long do you think the euphoria is going to last uh, this time? You want that one? Oh, yeah, it's fine. So as I said, like before, I think I will sell like from 90 to 95 percent of my portfolio this run. Uh, I can keep like a 5% as a moon bag in case like the market goes higher, like for much longer than what I think. Uh, but yeah, as I said before, I will start selling, slowly scaling out from my bags after Ethereum breaks all time high, slowly. And then when I spot euphoria in the market, I will sell more aggressively. Uh, yeah, I would sell like 90 to 95% during uh, like overall. So we'll keep like a 5% or to 10% of my portfolio in case like we have a super cycle of some bullshit like that, which I don't think it's going to happen. But just in case I'm willing to risk like some profits to try to ride that. Uh, and I think that, yeah, euphoria, I don't know, maybe it can last like a couple months. What do you, what do you think, Greg? Two or three months. It's really yeah. It's really hard to tell. I probably yeah, well really euphoria. Funny. I would say less than that. Um, like I think the parabolic move probably lasts like two three months. So yeah, okay, um, that would probably be yeah. If we're looking at the chart above, right? That would probably be more like the thrill and the euphoria combined type thing where yeah. we get like a few different pumps. But the euphoria, man, it's really hard. It's really interesting as well because. It's the my, this is my third cycle, and I feel like the first one I had no idea what I was getting into, and it just kind of happened. The second one I had I, I had a better idea, and I did some nice rotations, but then I, I, I got a little married to my bags towards the very top. And this Me time, too. I'm like going in fucking cold-blooded. So, Same. Um, it, I wish I could 
come from a place like speak from a place where it's like I sold the top last time and here's how I did it because I didn't. Um, but I feel a lot more confident. And that's why you should follow us again because we're going to be tweeting out like a lot of the mindset stuff and a lot of the like the feelings, like removing feelings uh, as best as possible. Or at yeah. least trying to become aware of what we're feeling and share insights about what we're seeing around us that you know you can only get from having gone through some multiple cycles so um yeah man it's hard to put a, a, a direct number on it as far as like this is how long it'll last it's really a guessing game it's more of yeah. having the intuition and the experience of having felt it before and being like okay i think now's a good time to start scaling completely agree with you awesome well listen we got some other hands um we don't have any more time though today uh but this was definitely a success nagata i'll give you the, the last word bro here um and then we'll shut down the room but before i do i just want to say thank you to everybody for coming through uh to wi-fi money we're going to be doing this every weekend um we might do them during the week as well we might add on more but we're not going to be doing less uh drop yeah. some questions as well like throughout the week uh, make sure you join Nagato's Telegram channel and his email list. Those are both in his description, uh, my tele uh, in his bio, link in bio, excuse me. Um, my Telegram is the link in my bio. So if you guys want more information about what we're talking about, definitely do that. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming through. Nagato, why don't you leave him with a, a little message and then I'll shut it down. Yeah, guys, like, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, it was great. I had a blast here tonight. Uh, probably like next Saturday, I won't be able to host this Wi-Fi money because I'm traveling. So maybe we can like anticipate it during the week if uh, Greg has time. But yeah, uh, we, we're planning on like bringing back Wi-Fi money every week, at least one episode per week. And we will do our best to like guide you during the this bull run because like we've been there in the past. We made a shit ton of mistakes. And if we can, we would like to help you not to make them. Let's fucking go. And thanks for it's all the speakers good. come up asking questions. Thank you for all the comments, yeah. you guys. And uh, we will see you shortly. Good luck out there.